case you didn't see my last video, I'll link it up here somewhere. This is the Squire Sonic Series Esquire H. And in that video, I told you all about the guitar, went over the specs, we did some sound samples, and I mentioned that I was going to do some modding to it. And I've got the modding done, but I'm not going to bore you with all sorts of footage of me sanding and working on the frets and wiring and all that good stuff, because I didn't shoot any. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the mods and tell you why I made these mods. And then I'm going to do some sound samples of the most important mod, and that is the three-way switch right here. I'm Scott, you're watching Guitar Nabor. Now before I even got this guitar, I knew what I was getting into. This is the bottom line Squire series. It replaced the Bullet series and I knew a $200 guitar from Squire, I knew it was gonna be a decent guitar, but I just, uh, I, I knew I'd have to make some adjustments, especially straight out the box. Now one of the first things I did was I took the longer screws out of the bridge and I put shorter screws in there that you cannot even see now. And then I fixed the radius of the saddles because they were very straight and didn't really fit the radius of the fretboard. And I was able to get the action down really low with minimal to zero fret buzz whatsoever. The second thing I did was I changed out the pickup from the crappy two wire Squire 8.2K ohm humbucker to a much better, this is a Seymour Duncan JBSH4. You can't go wrong with a JB in anything. I already had this one here and I had a three-way switch. So I looked up this mod and it's a three-way switch with a four-wire humbucker, volume, tone, and in the first position, you've got the humbucker in the regular series configuration. In the middle position, it is, uh, it's, it's parallel, so it kind of scoops the mids. And in the third position, it splits the humbucker just using the uh, slug side of it, which gives it a really good single coil twangy sound. And with the wiring diagram, which I'll link down in the description down there, was you're supposed to use 250K pots and a 0.047 capacitor. Well, I didn't use either of those. I just went along with the 500 and the 0.0223 capacitor. And I think that actually contributes to the twanginess when this is in single coil and gives it a little more uh, punch to it. With that three-way mod right there, it has turned this little guitar into a tone machine. Once I got that all wired up and tested it out, I went to work on the neck. The frets needed a lot of polishing. I mean, they were scrapey. You get down here and you're bending these, it just sounded like sandpaper across the frets. So I polished those up real nice and I took, if, I don't know if you'd be able to see that, there's a certain sheen to this neck now. What I did, I just took some 2000 grit sandpaper and rubbed it really good on here. These necks are very cheap, satin poly finished necks and they just don't feel all that great. Now, once you take that 2000 grit sandpaper and rub it, it just makes it smooth as silk and makes it feel so much better. It doesn't feel like such a cheap neck. It feels a lot better to play too. After I did that, I started to go work on the headstock. Now, the headstock didn't really need any work, and the tuners, they were okay. They would have worked, they stayed in tune, but the problem is the ratio was all jacked up on them. They were really janky and jumpy. If you, you know, you started to turn and they wouldn't turn. I mean, like a good eighth of a turn, and it just didn't seem like they were doing anything. And I took those out and I bought these Wilkinson Easy Locks, and I've had these before and they have two holes in the posts and it's kind of weird how you, uh, how you string them up, but they're like a 19 to one ratio or something like that. And they work really well. I left the nut as is and I just polished it, but I did take some true oil and you can see it shining right there. And I did cover the headstock and just give it a nice glossy look. It just looks a little better than the regular matte finish that's already on it. Speaking of matte finish, I didn't like the fretboard, how it felt. Again, it's just like the back, it's that satin poly. It's kind of a uh, very cheap feeling. I mean, it's a cheap guitar. So I took a razor blade and I went through each fret and I scraped that satin poly off. And then I took some boiled linseed oil and I put about six coats of boiled linseed oil, let it soak up really well. And it will if you get that poly off of there. And it just gives it a little bit of shine and a nice smoother finish. Now I do notice that uh, it's starting to get a little bit dirty from my fingers and from the strings. I put some Ernie balls on here and I may have to go back over and clean it with a razor blade again just to get some of that dirt because I mean it doesn't matter if you get 
a little bit of oil on your hair, it's going to show on a maple fretboard. And it might look cool in the long run. It might look grungy. And the last part of the puzzle was the knobs. Now, I didn't want to use the basic stock chrome knobs that came with it. I wanted something a little bit different, but I didn't want to put strat knobs on there. So I put these little reflective top hat looking knobs on there, and I think they add a nice aesthetic to the guitar. And instead of going with a normal barrel switch, I went with a top hat switch because it's just a little bit higher, and when you're playing, it's easier to it's easier to hit. I like those. I did have to uh, kind of make it fit right though. Let's hear some sound samples. <laughs> As you heard, you can get a lot of different tones out of that three-way mod and the humbucker. Now, a lot of people don't think that you can get a lot of uh, different sounds from just a bridge humbucker, but that little modification right there turned this little Esquire pretty much a one-tone guitar into almost like the Esquire with a single coil. So how much time, effort, and money did I actually put into modding this $200 guitar, and was it worth it? First of all, I say, yeah, it was, it was worth it to me. This guitar has become one of my favorite guitars to play out of all my guitars, and I've only had it for about two weeks. Now, as far as money goes, let's look at it this way. I already had the Seymour Duncan pickup. That was $100 spent a long time ago. And I already had the Telecaster control plate, so that wasn't really an issue either. And the three-way switch, I had the three-way switch in a pile of parts from a long time ago as well. So the only thing I really bought for this thing are the tuners and the knobs and together maybe fifty dollars as far as time and effort goes maybe a few hours maybe four hours at the most wiring didn't take long at all that was a fairly simple wire job and uh working on the neck probably took the longest not the back part of so much but working on the frets fret work can be kind of tedious and it takes some time there was nothing wrong with the frets, they just needed a little polishing and the ends just needed a little bit of smoothing. They didn't have any fret sprout, but they were a little sharp right on the end there. So once I got those smooth, everything else was easy and I just put that little bit of true oil on the headstock and let it dry and then wet sanded it and that didn't take long at all. Modding is all about how much time and effort you want to put into a guitar. Is it worth it? Will it be worth it in the long run? Are you gonna take a $200 Squire put $150 worth of parts in it and sell it for $350? No, so get that out of your head right now. There's very little chance that anybody's gonna be like, oh man, a $350 Squire that originally cost $200. Save all your original parts if you decide to sell a guitar, take those parts out, put it back stock, and then sell it. So I hope you liked this video and maybe it inspired you to get your own and do some modifications as well easy modifications. You don't have to be a luthier to do any of this kind of stuff, but a little bit of know-how and watching some YouTube videos and you can learn how to do a decent setup on a guitar. If you do like this video, hit that like button for me. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button for me too. We'll see you next time.